there, there are even books on, uh, on having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, but they don't tell you how to. I, I want to talk about two things, silence and stillness. You see, the flesh, our, our, our carnal side, it can do many things, and it will not put up a fight. You can sit in a worship service, it won't put up a fight. You can watch a Christian broadcast, it won't put up a fight. You can read the Word. Atheists read the Word. Cult leaders read the Word. But they don't see transformation. But the moment you begin to seek the Lord, the flesh starts to put up a fight. Why? Because it's in the seeking that the flesh dies. It's in the seeking of the Spirit that the flesh dies. This is why, one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit wants to be sought. And so I had to learn this somewhat the hard way, and I'll just give you the short version, because I had pressed in to seek the Holy Spirit. There was a time in my life where there was a swift movement to my spirituality, and then I felt like I hit this wall. The, the, the true proof that you believe in prayer is that you actually pray. And the only reason the only reason we don't pray is because we don't believe that it'll work. And so, I mean, God made us a promise to seek me with all your heart and you'll find me. That's a guarantee. And if you believe that, you'll seek him. If you don't believe that, you won't seek him. But the reward is him. He's my great reward. Of course. So I found myself in that place. I hit that wall and I'm getting frustrated, but I moved beyond the frustration with the help of the Holy Spirit. I tried everything. I tried emotion. I tried to make up for in volume when I lacked in connection and I tried to connect with God with my emotion. He wouldn't have it. I tried to use my intellect. I tried to use my passion. I tried to guilt God into a response. Lord, don't you hear me? Can't you see me but you see intellect failed emotion failed willpower failed it's not by power nor by might but by my spirit says the Lord so Matthew 6 6 Jesus says when you pray go away privately private prayer is revealed in public power if there's no public power it's because there's no private prayer and so I begin to seek the Lord private hey, you know that's so good you slipped right by there I hope you heard what he said <laughs> And so then I had to learn the harder thing, which was stillness. And this is difficult. Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Stillness precedes revelation. We are uncomfortable with silence because the moment we're silenced, we start to notice all the chaos within. And we, we say things like, well, I, not, I didn't feel this way until I began to pray. It's not that it came up and we say, oh, well, the enemy attacked me when I started to pray. That's not the case. That inner chaos was always there. You just were never quiet enough to recognize it. No wonder you're walking around with depression and anxiety and frustration and confusion. That inner chaos is constantly going. But when you go to pray, it's not, it doesn't show up. It's revealed. And so that's why it used to take me four hours to get into the presence of the Lord to where I sensed His presence. Not always physical manifestation and tangible power, but always the sense. We're always to sense His presence. 24-7 awareness. I can tell you with all honesty, and I would not say this if it wasn't true. I think you know that about me. There, there is hardly five minutes that go by where I'm not aware of the Holy Spirit. Hardly five minutes where He doesn't cross my mind in some way, where I don't send some communication to Him. I call it retreating within myself and fellowshipping with Him. Uh, you know what? I, I need you to explain a little bit about this silence. The Holy Spirit wants to be sought. Right. Comment on that. And I think, well, there are several reasons why He wants to be sought, but one of the ones I want to focus on is the Holy Spirit wants to be sought because it purifies you. In the seeking, the flesh begins to weaken and the spirit begins to grow. Why? Because the flesh doesn't like to wait. And when you go into prayer and begin to seek the Lord in silence, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, when you do that, the flesh has to be still. Otherwise, you find yourself squirming and wanting to get out of prayer. But this is, this is where the power is at, because there, let me put it this way, noise does not equal power. There are some people who are making a lot of noise, but there's not a lot of demonstration. And so the power of the Holy Spirit comes when I am weak, then He is strong. Silence is the easy part. All of this is real simple, but not all of it is easy. Silence is the putting away of outer distraction. Stillness is the quieting of the soul. And that is the difficult part, because the moment we begin to pray, we have fears crossing our mind. We have our apprehensions crossing our mind. We have our responsibilities and those things that make us feel inadequate and shame. All of those things I call inner chaos. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do is teach you to trust Him. You see, the Holy Spirit wants to take you into the depths of God, but He waits for you at the gate of stillness. And so at the gate of stillness, we lay down our burdens. We give Him all that we carry, and we say with full, hearts full of trust, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to follow you into the presence of God. We have to learn... 
to subject the flesh and place our minds upon what the Holy Spirit is showing to us rather than what, the, what is taking place on the outside. This is living from the inside out rather than the outside in. I'm not letting what's outside of me affect what's inside. I'm keeping that reservoir and I'm tapping that for peace and joy and love. And the way you do that is by meditation on the Word. The way you do that is by meditation on the person of Jesus. And if you can capture a revelation that the Holy Spirit has given to you, and you meditate on that revelation, that brings about the stillness of the soul, which enables the Holy Spirit to work in you. Now, you said to me that when you originally started this, it would take you like four hours to get in the Spirit, but now it's just minutes. Well, it was very fleshly. And it was the flesh getting in the way. And I had to learn to trust you. Part of being human. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be delivered from that, right? <laughs> and so, I mean, I'm there, and, and I remember there were times where it would take me three, four hours. And now, I, I'm telling you, and this is not just me that can do I think I believe this is every believer. I can enter in like that, where I can just go from, I mean, I mean talking about average, everyday things, which I do like to talk about. You know, I'm, I'm not you know, completely gone. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, there are also, there are also, but from, from talking about average things, I go right into the spirit to where the Holy Spirit can start speaking to me. I can see visions where I can see sickness on people sometimes. And you can move right into that. If you practice stillness, it's, it's it, the first time you do it, you got to, I'll put it to you this way. When you're digging a well, every shovel is full of dirt until you hit water. And soon you find that that flesh, the dirt, moves out of the way and there's less of it each time you go back. Okay, uh, give me a couple practical things uh, to the person that's going to do exactly what you originally did. Uh, you, you have a quiet place, you go there. What do you do next? Well, you know, one of the reasons we close our eyes is not because God can't hear us if we don't. It's that it puts out the distraction. We close our eyes because it's it removes more distraction, and that really is the key. You remove distractions in the natural, that allows you to focus on the internal. Jesus said, out of your inner man shall flow rivers of living water. First Thessalonians 5.23 tells us that there is the body, the soul, and the spirit. So I put away the body, I retreat further from away from my soul, and I retreat into the spirit. The way you do that is by meditation on the Word. So I'll give this one nugget so that they can just go and start. If they start there and get this, the other ones will come naturally. You get capture revelation of Jesus, if he's revealed to you as deliverer, as healer, I like to see his revelation reveals him with eyes of fire. And, and, and you capture that revelation and you meditate on the word, not on your imagination and what, what you, because like, that would be constructing an idol or an image, but, but sort of like what they do with the tabernacle. In Hebrews it tells us that this was an image in heaven and they copied that image because it was given by God. So because the revelation is given by God, I can focus on that. And so I focus on this revelation of Jesus and I, I quiet my soul, I, I, I put everything else aside. A great man of God told me that if you have an hour to pray, worship for 45 minutes. And you just get in and you just begin to worship and you just, on that revelation, Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, you're so precious and I love you. You're the healer. You're the See, even as I'm doing that now, I can sense I'm coming in. Because you capture that revelation, the Holy Spirit breathes upon the Word and causes creation to take place. The Word without the Spirit is information. The Spirit without the Word is inspiration. Together they bring about creation. And that causes something to transpire in you. And so the Word starts to take hold of you. You begin to become transformed and changed. And it really is as simple as meditating on the Word. 